Hi everyone, it's Hope Yoder with Embellish Maker Fundamental Beginner Video 1. So this is what Embellish Maker looks like. When you open the screen, you'll have this landing page that shows you support. If you have problems with the software, you'll click here. You have the Makers Club, events if you'd like to find Embellish events near you, webinars, getting started, and you can, this is pretty self-explanatory. So I'll close this screen, and this is what Embellish Maker will look like the first time you open it. I want you to notice that on the left are all of your different one-click wonders and digitizing tools, and on the right is your properties and your sequence window. On the bottom, you have your beautiful color bar. And if you would like to change the colors, right now we have the palette for Embellish Flawless Thread, and you've got others that you can select if you wish. If you want to scroll to see more colors, click on the arrow. One of the things I like to do is I like to expand all of the tools on the left by clicking on the plus. And now you've got them all open and you can slide them down. Now Embellish Maker is a full-blown digitizing program built from the ground up with robust full editing capabilities. You've got unlimited text and a lot of one-click wonders. But one thing I want to point out what makes this the most powerful embroidery program on the market is if you own Craft & Cut software, once you install Embellish Maker, all of your Craft & Cut functions will be loaded and working inside of Embellish Maker. All of these functions are shown with a yellow or orange letter in for craft in cut. So as I scroll up here, I want to show you we have save to cut. Now if you don't own in craft and cut software, do you need it? No, you probably are going to want it if you own a digital cutter in the future. So as I'm showing these videos, if you don't see anything with the letter N, in your program, that's because you don't own and Craft and Cut software. So I want to make it clear that you don't need to own it. This is a standalone program, but it's even more powerful if you are a Craft and Cut owner. So if you notice all of these different tools, let's go ahead and start with opening a design. You can go under File and you can start a new page. You also have a shortcut. Let's just click New Page. I've got a page open. Now, if I wanted to, mer let's see, open an embroidery design, I could go under File, Open, and I could open a design. This is one that I have on my computer. So you've got a design open. Now, just basics of an existing design, or one you create, is you have some shortcut keys up here. These are also found over in the left side of the screen. This is your select tool. So if you want to select an object, you can either open it in the properties window, the sequence window. For instance, color number one looks like this. So if you open this and you select color number one, you can see that it's selected here. Or you can select it by using this arrow. You've got all of your different colors, and notice I'm expanding them so you can see what each one is. And as we scroll down, we'll expand them all. This looks a little different than maybe what you're used to. It shows you what the, the colors are, and it also shows you how many stitches in this column. Sometimes this is really hard to scroll up and down if your design has a lot of colors. This particular design has 10 colors. You can see that up here. It also gives you the height and the width. If you want that in inches, you can simply right click 
in the toolbar and change it. Now, one shortcut that I like to do is if I wanted to just ex uh, collapse these so it's not long and I don't need to see each and every thing, in this area, right click and then left click on Collapse All and that shortens it up. That way you can just open what you need. Now this file, we can hide it by clicking on the eye and opening it. When I hide it, notice it's grayed out. That means it's not visible. If I wanted to see more information about the properties of this, I simply click on the properties. And this is going to give me inches, millimeter, just if you want to inspect the design. So if I go back to sequence, there I go. Now let's say I wanted to see what the very last color was, the eyelashes, I would click on them. Notice how it's highlighted here and the select tool is highlighted. If I wanted to see the properties of the last color, I'll scroll up and select properties. Perfect. Now if I wanted to change a color, let's say I wanted his eye to be a brownish color. I'm going to, with the eye selected, travel down to my color bar and change the color. If I don't see the color that I want, again, I can change and search for the color by typing in pink and I see in this color palette, I have pink mist and I select fine and there's pink mist. If I wanted to change it back to black, I can type in the word black and find, and there's my black color. Actually, there was my black color. Sorry about that. So this is just how to work with an opening design or an existing design. If I wanted to view this 3D, I would just select the shortcut for 3D. I've also got my zoom tools where I can go smaller or larger, or if I click this, double click, then I can zoom in to just a portion. If I want to go back to 100%, I'm going to click on this icon. Do you notice, I love this, when I collect, select a shortcut, it's also highlighted over here. So if I want to know where to find it, there we go. I'll click on this and it brings me back to full screen. So that is working with opening a design. The design tab on Embellish Maker is down on the lower left. For instance, if I want to open a new page, I would travel under File, New Page, or I can come under File and New. Let's use this again. And when I select New Page, I'll have a nice blank canvas and the new page is here, and the existing design, you can scroll through the different tabs here. So that is how you open an embroidery design inside of Embellish Maker. Now, for those of you who want to import SVG files, because maybe you own Craft and Cut, you're gonna go under File and Import Artwork. Just a little bit about Embellish Maker. Let's take this and create some text. Now, some features in Embellish Maker are you have Puff Foam automated feature, and I'll show you that in another video. Right now, I just wanna let you know that when you click on text, which if we scroll down, is also found down in this window, I can have straight text, text on a circle, vertical, monogram, we've got, and this F for font play, it has the letter N in orange, which means that's only available to people who already own Craft and Cut. So let's just select text and left click in this area. If I wanna change the text, the type of font, I'm gonna scroll over to the properties window and click on that. And here I've got a lot of different um, features. For instance, Dill Pickle is a font 
that is from Craft and Cut. So let's talk about fonts for a moment. You may have different fonts than I have, and the reason is I have Craft and Cut loaded on my computer, so anything that's available in Craft and Cut will have the letter N in front of it, just like these features with the letter N. Now, Craft and Cut fonts with the letter N are not stitches, they're artwork. So I'm going to scroll down. Anything with the letter O, for instance, is built-in stitches. So I'm going to change that to Apprentice, and these will be stitches I can embroider. It's going to give me all of my information here, height and width. And if we scroll down, we've got even more information. Now to change the font, I need to click Apply. And you can see what happened in my screen here. So I've got my text. So again, let's scroll up and the letter fonts with the letter O mean outline fonts. Fonts without anything in them are just embellish maker fonts. And again, N, the letter N for craft and cut means that I have craft and cut loaded and I have artwork fonts. I also have true type fonts. To find those, they would be whatever are installed on my computer. I'm going to check this box and we'll just use the top one and I will scroll down and select apply. Now these, it automatically converted into fonts and it's letting me know that these are too big. So I'm going to undo that. We'll talk about that in a future video. So let's just work with the fonts with the letter O or Embellish Maker fonts. I'm going to scroll down and click Apply. If I want to see what this is going to look like in 3D, I have that quick feature. If I'd like to change the color, I can scroll down here. One of the other things, if I click on T for text again, I have these little nodes that I can use. To use these, you're going to scroll, left click, and you can pull the letters further apart by clicking and dragging on the blue diamond. The orange square allows you to pull them out of alignment, up or down if you like. For instance, these fonts are overlapping, so I might want to move them apart or keep them overlapping. You will only find these nodes when you're in the text mode. For instance, I've just selected my text. They've gone away. To make them reappear, all you have to do is select the text tool. This is an opening look at Embellish Maker. Stay tuned for another video where I'll show you one exclusive feature called Puff Foam in Embellish Maker.